Hey there everyone, welcome back to Game Binding. My name is Dave, and welcome back to another Smash Up week where we are taking a look at Smash Up Munchkin. So I've gotten over out of the box long ago, so there's just going to be a picture right here. I've had Smash Up Munchkin for a while, and I gotta say, I've never played a game of Munchkin. I've seen people play, so I feel like I know how the mechanism really work, and I know the game is to take that kind of thing. It's just really never appealed to me. The art never really grabbed me, so I'm just not a huge fan of it. Not that I'm poo-pooing on it, it's just not something I'm interested in. So when I seen Smash Up Munchkin, I'm like, well, yeah, I love Smash Up, and I'm definitely going to get this box set because it has a ton of stuff in it, but is it going to actually help me like the IP of Munchkin? Well, let me show you what it has in the box, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is what comes in the expansion or the core set of Smash Up Munchkin, and I'm pretty sure this is the most when it comes to cards that you will get. You get a treasure deck, um, you get a monster deck, you of course get your bases, you get four different classes in addition to four different races. So um, these are all sleeved by the way, I didn't feel like unsleeving them and you're gonna have to deal with that. Uh, the VP tokens are actually really cool. They are my second favorite and I think the five token is probably my number one five token uh, in my books so really cool and interesting stuff so far i like how the thief is stealing all the kittens because because i would definitely steal all those kittens if i seen them as well so without further ado we're going to start by showing you the bases because this will transition to showing you how the monsters and the treasures work which is the new mechanism and important to teach you first and then i'll show you what the factions and races do Okay, so the bases are shown off first here because they have the monsters on here. Now, they all do have a various ability most of the time after a monster here is, is destroyed. Play another monster here, uh, but you will initially go ahead and play three monsters on this de this base here. And they will count for the um, power that it takes to break the base as well. So... Um, we will put three here, and then the monsters themselves have ability. At the end of the turn, each player's turn, destroy all minions here with two power or less. Uh, Knight of the Living Dead, um, ongoing this monster plus one token for each other monster here. And ongoing, if this is an, the only monster here, it gets plus three power. So these will go up towards the base, and there are... Um, classes and or races that specifically attack the monsters which sometimes gives you treasure so the treasure is just like any other card uh, that you would hold in your hand they seem to be just a little more powerful but not too much to break the game uh, but you got boots of butt kicking you may play an extra action this minion gets plus one power but you have a whole bunch of these um treasures and when you use these treasures they go into a separate discard pile so this deck here is completely new and very cool um i'm already saying that i like it i like when they add something uh interesting and it doesn't take much it just took a deck and a few monsters Monsters to pair with it and uh, then you're off and running so you got the wand of drowsiness a wishing ring so you got a ton of um, treasures here you also have a ton of monsters as well you got the web troll and all that stuff here you got the hip hippogriff and you, you know there are multiples of each one that is the basics of what treasures and or monsters do you have different um bases here treasure bath of the pits uh the coffer and the bastion the mines oh, i love that so much um and just various ones so that is the bulk of the new stuff that comes in the set now let's go over all the factions and races in no particular order um but I will show you the first one 
that has to do with destroying monsters so you can know how that works. Okay, so warriors. I love warriors in any MMO or fantasy world. Now, I'm showing you this one because it has to do with monsters and if you beat a monster, most of the time you get treasure. This one, the taunter, you get um, can play a monster there. Berserker, you can destroy a monster of um, less than or equal to the power of him and you put a plus one token on him if you do. Uh, for a star player, she, after a monster is destroyed here, place one a power token on her. Big hero, destroy a monster here or play a monster here. Uh, the cleave, destroy a monster. You may play any treasure you get from destroying it. Uh, now, again, uh, treasures are like actions when you play them because th that's what they just basically are. Uh, play any monster on a base or destroy a minion and play two or less. Then we just have basically stuff like play on a minion. This one has plus two. A ruckus, choose a base, play two monsters there or destroy all monsters. Uh, we have the campaign each of your minions on the base has plus two um, and till the end of turn a war cry destroy a monster to add its power to the minion well, that's pretty cool at the base until the end of turn eternal hero so it has a lot of unique cards uh, a lot of doubles on the lower minions uh, dumbbells it's funny play on a minion this minion has plus three power now I will say the art's so funny um, and I don't know how thematic it is for Munchkin, but if you know Munchkin, you can kind of make that judgment call. Now let's move over to the Thieves. Okay, so the Thieves are all about getting that treasure, yo. So uh, you have the pick pickpocket. If there's another pickpocket here, draw a treasure card. Cat burglar, reveal any number of treasure cards from your hand and place power one uh, counter on this to this uh, character um, and you may discard two treasure cards to get a VP I love getting VPs uh, and then you have a master thief just draw a treasure card outright uh, draw a treasure card again this is all about getting that booty uh, smuggling uh, discard two treasure cards gain VP uh, I love VP again choose a minion discard a treasure card to give this plus three that is a potion uh, Bondler, Bandler, whatever his name is, Cle Clever Distraction, uh, play after a base scores. If you have a minion there, the winner loses one VP. And then we have Mugging here, transfer in action, play it on a minion to one of your minions. Basically, you're just thieving it and choose a treasure card and play, place it into your hand. So, yes, you are a thief. It does make sense. It has good theming to it. And because the treasures are so fun, I do like playing with the thieves and they're pretty good faction or class so let's move over to the next class so the clerics when it comes to playing uh any kind of class and any games i love warriors and then i love being the healer uh this one i guess kind of stays on theme it allows you to get a lot of cards from your discard pile so healing your cards um holy uh, roller <laughs> i like that name you you may shuffle a card from your discard pile into your deck uh, destroy an undead monster or shuffle a random minion into your from your discard pile into your deck deep friar after this uh, this base scores you may move another one of your minions here to another base instead of the discard pile if the discard pile has at least five cards place two of them chosen randomly into your hand that is a powerful card a collection plate place two random cards from your discard pile so again a lot of discard pile uh, reshuffling choose a base all minions get plus one to the end of turn been and gone after another base scores you may move one of your minions from there to here instead of the discard pile uh, remove curse destroy an action on a base so different things but mostly all about getting the cards out of the discard pile uh, they're okay um i think having ghost is a pretty good mashup with these but let's go over to the last class and then we'll go over to the actual races okay so the squishy mages here they're all about blowing stuff up and using magic and squiggly wigglies to take control of people's minions and stuff like that discard any number of cards play an extra minion of power three or less in, uh, for each card you discard it uh blaster master and uh, reverse on that discard a card to destroy a minion of power two or less Happy Zapper, uh, discard a card. You give this minion plus two power until the end of turn before the base score. So all about discarding cards in order to do various things. You may discard a card to play an extra minion. So this would actually be an interesting um, thing to pair up with the last faction that we were talked about. So Portal to Beyond, I love the Portal reference. Play on a base, discard a card to play a monster here. Mass Summoning, play on a monster on each base 
charms, uh, speed reading, discard a card, draw three cards, zap, discard a card to destroy a minion of power three or less, uh, draw until you have five cards, great card, I love that. I don't like drawing a lot, but I do like having a few cards that draw uh, a significant amount at once, that's what I like. Okay, so choose a minion, discard any number of cards, this minion gets plus one until the end of the turn, for each one that you discard it. So again, a lot of discarding, kind of like the ghost, if there's some way you can get your discards back, you can not worry about what you're discarding otherwise you can put some like robots and discard all those um wimpy 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 creatures so that is the last class that we have now let's go over to our first race okay so the elves are interesting because you have to help your opponent out in order to do stuff yourself kind of like the ignobles giving control uh but it's not my favorite style of play uh, but it was fun to play at least once. So this one, Elf Help Guru, you give everybody plus one power, uh, all the opponent's minions in order to play him. Flower Child, you may give another player control of this minion until it, it leaves play. To take control of one of the player's minions, power three or less, uh, play on one of your minions, move this minion to another base, run away more, <laughs> play before a base scores, move any number of your minions from another base, dancing root, all players shuffle their discard piles into their decks, and then draw a card, run away, <laughs> so you run away and then you run away more. Um, play before a base scores, if you have a minion there, move one of your minions uh, after you. Each other player draws a card, you draw a card for each player at the table, which can really help you out, there's a big uh, number count. Um, we have trade, we have helping hands, um, the fighter here that uh, is five after a player plays a minion you may place a power token counter on it and place a power token on this minion so a little bit of sharing is caring. Another player of your choice draws a card then you draw a card and flower child again. So again eh. so that is the helpful elves not my style of a play but I played them once and, and that was enough for me. They were fun. Okay, so now let's move on over to the orcs. The orcs are the well-rounded all-around type faction here. They do a little bit of everything. This minion is not affected by other players' actions. Hammer Slammer, destroy a minion of two power. This guy just does nothing, but he is he is a five, and you get two of those bad boys. Five again, Sore Lord. Each of your other minions have plus one power. Angry angry pillaging play on the base if it scores uh, if you have at least three or more power there the runner-up gains victory points there crush choose a base and another player who has fewer minions there then you destroy one of those players minions stalling play on the base each of the other players plays card you may choose for your minion here not to be affected by it gimme uh dog pile uh, oh, this one's fun um Death Breath, place a minion of power four or less at the bottom of its owner's deck. And stay down, yeah, I would with that big hammer. Actually, I would get the heck out of the way. Play it before base scores. If you have the highest total power here, other players cannot other players cannot play or use special abilities. A hindrance, I really like that, too tough. Play on a minion, this minion is not affected. So again, nothing that they specialize in, though if you're not sure what faction you want, this is a good one to have your butt covered in most scenarios. Okay, so we're gonna get over to the next faction now. The halflings are the hobbits with the sausage icon. They are a swarming faction, and I love swarmers. Um, so if if this is your only minion here, you may play an extra minion. A lot of play an extra minion. If another player has more power than you here, you may play an extra minion. Uh, you may play an extra minion, just outright. Shire Marshall, play an extra minion on the base where another player has more power than you. Unexpected party, uh, play an extra minion on a base where there are no minions. A lunch run, a rude awakening, a last call, play on before a base scores, play a minion there. Cancel that minion's ability until the end of the turn. Out of nowhere, reveal a card from the top of your deck. Until two minions have been revealed, place those two minions in your hand. Uh, shuffle the rest of your deck. So you can get just so many minions out on the on the um, board. Zombies, robots would pa pair wonderfully with these halflings. Play on a minion when this minion goes to the discard pile. Place it on the top of your deck instead. Small but tough. So I like their style of play. They are very good. Though I did save the last faction and, and or race for last because this is my favorite. And I was very much hoping that the dwarfs 
would be my favorite, not just on theme, but by mechanism, and they won outright. Let me show you. Okay, so the dwarves are all about being better because there's treasure, and treasure fascinates me. And if you do thieving dwarves, you have a combo to rival some of the best out there. Um, so Jim Grabber, uh, if this minion has a treasure card on it, plus two power, gold digger, I love all the art. I'm a fan of dwarves, so yeah, there's a little bias, but I love the way they play too. Place a treasure card from the discard into your hand. Loot lover, um, this minion has plus two power for each treasure card. Dwarven king, when the treasure card um, on one of your minions goes to discard power, place it in your hand instead. Greed is good. Draw a treasure card or place a treasure card from your discard pile into your hand. Uh, it's just so cool. Anything for money, discard any number of cards. Draw one treasure card for each card that you discard. So you can get cards, uh, treasure cards with them as well. Play up to three treasure cards from your hand. Such an awesome card. A cunning plan before you... Uh, before a base scores, draw a treasure card. You may play it if you want. Uh, mine, and I mean, everything has to do with buffing them up with the treasures. And I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I was very surprised. I didn't have much hope going into this expansion, but it pretty much won me over. Let me go ahead and give you my final thoughts. So that was Smash Up Munchkin, and what does it get? It actually gets two thumbs up from me. I'm super excited to say that I like this core set and it's one of the better like sets of factions out there halflings like robots is such a strong combination i love the treasure cards it's a new aspect that i don't think that it needed to be introduced with the the ip of munchkin but i'm glad that they introduced it nonetheless even if it was with munchkin especially if it was with munchkin because now i have it something about the game that i'm drawn towards and it kind of makes me want to play the game now to see if i kind of misjudged it though i do think my opinion is going to be that uh, it's just not m most likely a game for me but i do think munchkin stamped out a spot for itself in the smash up universe and Whereas I thought this was going to be a bad idea, wound up being something that I like most about Smash Up. Now there are tons of sets out there, like there's a Japan set that I like a lot more than this. And I think the core set, the standard set of uh, Smash Up is maybe a tad bit better. But what Munchkin Smash Up brings to the universe has to be appreciated because it brings such coolness. Again, the treasures and dwarves. I love that I get to play with dwarves, even if it's the arts, again, not my favorite thing, but they did okay. So. Uh, is this something that you need to go out and get if you just have the core set and you want an expansion if you like munchkin i think yeah it's a good one to, to pick up if it's the second thing that you're going to buy maybe uh but i do think a smaller expansion would be a nice thing to kind of set yourself up and then get this uh core set if you can around third or fourth edition to, to your actual collection regardless if you pick it up you're not going to be disappointed because I don't like the um, IP so much of Munchkin. Regardless, if you get this expansion, you're going to like it. Again, me not being a big fan of Munchkin, it won me over. So if you like Smash Up, it's going to provide such a great and depth and variety of things to play. So thank you so much for joining me in today's video, everyone. Fine nation out there, please click like and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. But until the next time that I see you and another Smash Up Week video, my name is Dave. Have a great rest of your day and a great time with all your play. Heard it here in the game fine. I'm out. Bye. Fine Nation, we love making content here for you on the channel, and we're almost at 15,000 subscribers, so subscribe now and help us out. This video right here, I think you'll like. This video right here, YouTube thinks you'll like. Or you can just sit here and watch me dance as a dinosaur for a little bit longer. You can visit us at our social media outlets, and we're going to be improving our Patreon here soon. That's all for today. Miko, it's time to go. Good girl, Miko.